GoPro Hero 8, GoPro Hero 10. Have I done the right thing by upgrading? I don't know. Let's find out together. Welcome back. GoPro Hero 10. Why did I upgrade <laughs> from Hero 8? OK, let's talk all about it. So um, to start with, why do I use a GoPro? So I, if you've watched my YouTube channel, channel you'll, you'll know I shoot running videos. So um, I use a GoPro because it produces the the most stable footage uh, with with great colours straight off the camera without having to go through all sorts of colour grading and mucking about in post-production. Uh, so that's why I use it. But I have had some issues. OK, so issues with a Hero 8. Um, Right, well, my main, right, so when I film, I film for long periods of time. I might film for an hour, two hours, three hours, up to 10 or 12 hours in a shoot. So, and I use a external battery pack. So, as you can see on a Hero 8, I bought one of these third party doors with a um, hole in it, which means that you're terrified of getting it wet because uh, it's not properly waterproofed. They <laughs> GoPro seem to make this problem themselves. So on the old GoPros, the um, the the charging port was on a separate on the other side and then they've changed it. They changed it so that the Go the charging port is in the same place as the SD card and the battery. So, um, so yeah, so I, I was worried about it getting wet. Um, also, if it does rain anyway, you can't really film with the 8 in the rain because you get wa any water on the lens, it just sits there. Um, I'll show you some footage in a sec of that. <laughs> it sits there and it doesn't move. So that's not so good. But the main problem I have with the Hero 8 is it turning itself off in the cold. So above about 6 or 7 degrees C, it works great. Um, stable footage. Uh, looks great. However, when it gets to the autumn time, you... Um, and you, you're going out and shooting in the morning and when it gets below about, you know, six degrees, seven, six, seven degrees C, the thing will just randomly turn itself off. Uh, and it doesn't make a beep. It just, you will go out and film and get back and find out it turns itself off after 20 minutes or an hour or an hour and 15 minutes or whatever, but it didn't make it all the way through. And so, you know, you've gone out, I've gone out and done a 15 mile run and find out I've only got four mile of footage. I know I've run through a beautiful sunrise and, and a lovely location on a perfect day and I haven't got the footage. It's no good. And so I looked online about this, why it did it. And not, not a huge amount of information, I guess, because perhaps I'm an outlier. Perhaps not every, but lots of people use a GoPro the way I do. But it seemed to be an issue with it. Basically, you just weren't get it couldn't get enough current into the chip to run the stabilisation at the lower temperatures. It just couldn't cope. And... Um, 
the issue I'm guessing is the chip. So the chip in the Hero 8 is one that they've been using for about four or five years, I think. A bit lazy, really. And um, yeah, so when the Hero 9 came out, I wasn't at all tempted to upgrade because it had exactly the same chip as the 8 in it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so that was... So when it gets cold, I have to swap and use a, an Osmo Action, which doesn't produce. If you go back, if you go back on my YouTube channel last year to sort of October, November, you will notice when it changes because you go from stable footage to footage which is more jumpy. And that's because it just doesn't produce the stable look footage because I, I say I shoot at four I shoot my videos at 4k 30 for YouTube and Vimeo and then I will I shoot it all at 4k 30 and then I will speed things up and so some bit I can pick which bits of the video I want to be at normal speed and which bits you want to fast forward through because you don't want to watch two and a half hours of me puffing uh, you want to you get through the thing in 20 minutes. So, uh, yeah, so I'll, last winter I changed to that. And so when I heard that the Hero 10 was coming out and that they were going to have a new chip in it, I thought, hmm, this is probably worth me looking into because it means potentially with a new chip that um, I will be able to shoot when it's cold. So uh, yeah, that the other so the other so the the advantage is over the eight oh the ten over the eight. It's got the new chip, which so far so good seems to be better in the cold. Two, as with the nine, it's got this auto leveling feature, which is great because I, I do spend an awful lot of time in post production. No matter how carefully you put the thing on your head, you end up with a it being slightly off kilter and having to adjust the angle of the footage in post-production. So auto leveling, that's great. I'd say that on the hydro hydrophobic lens, that's great. The other thing is a feature they added to the nine as well, is this door with a hole in it. You can buy extra, which has got a little rubber gasket on the inside. So it should be pretty waterproof. OK, um, and if you're buying a 10 anyway, the, to get a good, the good price, uh, you've got to pay for their subscription anyway, which gives you uh, no questions asked replacement if it breaks. So I should be OK. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, those are the key things for me. Really, GoPro are playing a risky game, really, because this produces great stable content. But frankly, so does my iPhone 13 Pro, um, except I can't really sensibly strap a iPhone 13 Pro onto my head. Uh, but it wouldn't be beyond the wit of man for Samsung, Google or Apple to come out with a, a separate camera module that you could wear on your head or on your lapel or what have you that fed straight into your phone. And I suspect that would kill GoPro stone dead because the footage is... All these phone manufacturers know how to make great, colour footage that's crisp it's just you know like a, the GoPro footage <laughs> cameras which are properly waterproof um, and you don't overheat don't turn themselves off in the cold uh, that um, 
have decent software. That's one of the weaknesses of the... It... <sighs> yeah, so the software that comes with this stuff. So you've got to... <laughs> you've got to... Um, get their £50 a year subscription, really, to get the sensible price on this product. Uh, and the key benefit of the £50 a year subscription is unlimited cloud storage for your footage. However, uh, and actually the Wi-Fi is supposed to be faster on the new one than the old. However, having said that, I mean, I could never, ever get it to work with an 8 to upload. And so far, I've not managed to get it to work with a 10 either. Um, and why is that? Probably because, yeah, so I'm trying to, that I, I'm filming for hours at a time. So I'm, I'm generating these massive files. So it's just almost impossible to upload them to the cloud. Uh, but also, yeah, so their work, the workflow of it. So they have got an app, the, the GoPro Quick app. Um, and I have that on my Mac. So my workflow, I get the footage. <laughs> it's another annoying thing. So with the, uh, with the 8, I got this. Used to work great. Used to just plug USB 3 cable into, the, into there, into the back of my computer, and it would offload all the footage nicely quickly. Then all of one, all of a sudden they did a software update and that stopped working. You know, I tried everything, resetting it, what have you, and uh, it's them. It does exactly the same with this one. Uh, and so I had to install their GoPro Quick app and I could never get it to reliably work. It was just useless. So in the end, I used, uh, I, I've taken to just removing the SD card and putting it straight into the, you know, into the back of the computer, which offloads the footage quickly, works reliably. <sighs> the only trouble with that being that you are constantly having to take the camera on and off its mount. And so, I look here. Yeah. So I use a head mount. You see, one of the prongs has snapped off and that's just from wear and tear because you're constantly having to take the thing on and off, on and off, on and off. Yeah, so and so playing with this new one, I thought, right, let's um, try this GoPro Quicker app again and try and get it to upload the footage. And it wasn't working reliably. So I thought, mm, perhaps I've not got the latest version of the software. And... Um, went on the site and it appears that they've just discontinued the the Mac PC version of the software that basically you're supposed to do all your editing on your phone. And I'm sorry that just really doesn't work for my workflow. You know I want to get the footage off and get it into Adobe Premiere Pro on the computer and and work with it in there. Yeah, so they just the software's not great, but the footage is okay. So, um, let's deal with the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is all this talk about the Hero 10 overheating. Right. And so I've had a play with this and I first off put it put it onto my I've got two head mounts. So I mounted it in a head mount and ran it in the house. And of course, I am outside normally, but I thought I'll give it a go inside first. And I set it to 4K30 because that's what I need to shoot at. Whilst uh, 5K, 5, it will, the new one will do up to 5.360, is it? Yeah, or 4K 120. Now, 4K 120 might be useful for me at times uh, in that I'll be able to do slow-mo content with it. Um, but if I was ever doing that, 
I would be just pressing record and doing it for, you know, a minute. So I can't see there ever being an issue with it, that overheating. What mattered to me was, will it re reliably run for extended periods of time shooting 4K 30 footage? So I ran it beside the Hero A in exactly the same conditions and um, yeah, the, the 10 turned itself off after an hour. OK, um, and while it was running, you could tell the 10 runs considerably hotter than the 8. It it gets hot. Uh, so I, I did another test and the second time it actually managed that time, it managed to run for three hours. So it can run for indoors. But if if I had an indoor application for it, I would be concerned. I'd be worried that it was going to turn itself off. Although when it did turn itself off, at least it beeped. So when my, when the old when this one turns off in the cold, it just doesn't make any noise at all. <laughs> you don't know it's turned itself off. Um, right, so. Yeah, so it will, it'll film 4K30 inside, but not super reliably. Outside, okay, so I gave it a baptism of fire. I took it and used it when I filmed the Chester Marathon uh, the week last weekend. Which was really quite useful, actually, because it gave it a test of multiple things. First, it was a cold morning, about five degrees C and, it, and a wind chill. It, it was really chilly. chilly. It was, I was shivering at the start. The sort, Exactly the sort of conditions where the eight would just die on me. And it, you know, filmed for three and a half hours. No problem. So... No problem there. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'll update you if anything changes when it, I mean, I've just got I've got to wait now until we do get those mornings where I get up and I go out and running at dawn and it's close to zero. It won't be long now, another six weeks probably, and it will be getting that sort of weather. Um, but so far, so good. I'm hopeful that the 10 is actually going to continue working in the colder temperatures and that's down to the um, new chip. Also, when I was out filming the Chester Marathon, I did have a feel of it a couple of times and it wasn't hot at all because it's outside, it's on a mount, you're moving through space and the ambient temperature is low. OK, so. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to the summertime, I will. I might you see I'm I may if it was a really hot day. I might come across a problem where this one overheats. Don't know. If I'm going to go and run for four hours, who knows? It might overheat. So in a really hot summer, I'm likely to wear both just until I'm sure that it's going to work. Won't know until I'm in that, that situation. Yeah, so it seems to be able to handle the cold. The second thing I noticed, well, again, the, the, the auto levelling was good. Um, it was a little bit funny in places that where I look at it and go, that doesn't look quite straight. I suspect it's because it, it's adjusting and it doesn't want to jerk it. So you come round a corner and it's adjusted to where your head is and then you and it's not. And then you look at something, a, a building and. I'll show you a bit here, the bit with the clock tower. I thought, hmm, it's not, but it's fine. It works. Uh, Saved me an awful lot of time in post-production too. So that's that. Um, what else? Improved stability, maybe. I mean, if you look at it here, here's some footage shot at normal speed on a 10. Here's some 
footage that's been speeded up. Lovely and all lovely and smooth. If we compare that with an eight, here we've got some runner to standard speed. And here we've got some run at a faster speed. Uh, again, yeah, so it's subjective. To me, I think there is a slight improvement in the stability, but it's not, you know, it's not massive. Um, also, low light. So one of the other things you get with the 8 is uh, when it get when it's dark, it goes jittery. You know, it's so if you look at this footage here where I'm I'm running at sunset, it's it's running nice and stable, and then you reach a point where it just can't cope, and then all of a sudden it's choppy and all over the place. If you slow the footage down and play it at standard speed, it's not so bad. Um but it's uh, you know it's not great. Um the 10 the only test I've got really here is running through this bit of tunnel here. And yeah, you, yeah, it's it's I think it's more stable, but it's still not super. I mean we could do with larger sensors on these things really. Um which I'm sure will come. If they don't do it, one of the smartphone providers will. Uh, yeah, so the the low light photography as video in the again my iPhone 13 Pro that's knocks the sock you know much better. That's really it. You can really film in lower light conditions with that. Finally, what's the other, the other? Okay, so the other thing is the hydrophobic coating on the lens. So, yeah, if you so if you look at this bit of footage here, we <laughs> shot with a Hero Eight. I um, you, you get a little one little dot of water that's come off a leaf onto the lens, and it just sits there. It's infuriating because of you, of course, you've no idea. And then you get back and unfortunately you've got, um, you know, two minutes of footage where it's got, it's all odd because it's got water on the lens. And then, yeah, and here if you go, you know, if you look at this where it's starting to rain, it, it just ruins it. And I'm there constantly wiping it with a sock, trying to keep the water off the lens in those situations where you go out and then you get caught in a short shower. Uh, with the 10, it, I wouldn't say it, it cures the problem. I wouldn't say there is no, you know, that whew, it's water's gone. If you look at some of this footage here, you'll see I have got water on the lens. But but in the, on the marathon route, it really did rain. <laughs> and I was still able to shoot. And I got some nice rain footage here. I mean, look at this bit here. I think that's beautiful. I mean, the, the GoPro has taken some really beautiful footage there. And it's, yeah, there isn't a, a problem. So, yeah, that, that that's a nice feature. OK, to wrap up then. It's an infuriating product. In the, you expect everything to just work. But with a GoPro, you have to make allowances for it. You have to go, oh, well, we'll put a special door on it or, oh, we'll, we'll set up a special fan to keep it cool or set up this external battery system or we'll um, use a different way of, of uh, different software system for managing the footage or, you know, you, you, you're looking for ways around it and... You can, but it, you shouldn't really have to. Come on, GoPro, up your game a bit, really. Um, otherwise, I say, when if somebody else comes out with, with a product as stable, I'll just use that instead. Um, however, right now, if you want to be able to sh um, film stable, 
4K 30 footage. I mean, I'm, I shoot 4K 30 uh, cinematic. I hate the, I like, when I'm running, I want you to feel like you're there. So I don't want the warping effect. I want a cinematic effect. I have the bit rate high. Uh, what else? Yeah, that's, that's how I run it. And it, you know, wide ISO 100, 1600. Um, so the colours with the 8, I used to run it on GoPro. On the 10, I now run it on natural, which looks great. Um, so, yeah, it's it's works. It works as long as it continues working through the winter. I'll be a happy bunny because I'll be able to make lots and lots of beautiful <laughs> running videos for you. OK, I hope that was useful to you. Um, if you were considering buying one, uh, if you are considering buying one, I would say for outside use, 4K30, great. If your application is inside, I would think twice. So if, it, for example, you wanted to mount it in your car, I, I wouldn't like to guarantee it's going to work reliably. Um, but yeah, for outside and for the higher frame rate stuff, if you want to film at 60 or 120, yes, it can do it. Um, as long as your idea of shooting footage is shooting for, you know, two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, you should be fine. If you're like me, though, whose idea of shooting footage is turn it on, go and do what you're doing turn it off afterwards um maybe not <laughs> right take care folks see you next time